Welcome back to Hardly Minded My Business. I'm your host, Dashing D. I remembered my ring light today, so <laughs> hopefully everything looks good. But um, I hope y'all are having a good week as usual. Um, the week has been cool, fine. What I'm really concerned about is like the shit going on outside in the world. There's a lot of heavy stuff going on. Some of it we'll talk about, some of it we won't. Um, I don't even know, like I, I'm kind of of the mind of just like, should I just get into the episode? I don't even feel like we have a lot to discuss today, but also I'm kind of, uh, oh, I'm kind of like, well, what, 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 where do I start? Um, so like I said, my week has been cool. Um, I'm good, you know. Um, oh, before we even really get into anything, I'm having a little Earl Grey. Um, thank you. I just want to say thank you to um, everybody who either hit me up about the merge or made a purchase. I really appreciate y'all. Some of y'all have been rocking with me since the very beginning and it is so appreciated. I feel, <laughs> I feel so good that um, this was received well and more to come more to come i'm really excited so cheers to you and and thank you thank you so much for you know being like oh i fuck with you and i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm a pick me up some things i see y'all been y'all been purchasing the mugs and i appreciate that if you went on the site initially um it was mostly like long sleeves uh, but I did update the site. So there are t-shirts there now. I know it's getting warmer, especially in certain parts of the world and the country. So please uh, get your t-shirts or if you love a crew neck like me, y'all know I'm always on a crew neck. Um, there's crew necks, there's hoodies, there's t-shirts, there's uh, mugs, there's water bottles. So, you know, just go on and you know get you get you what you need there will be some updates coming um you know this is the first wave this is just the logo but there's gonna be some some other stuff coming so you know i'm I think we're just gonna rotate the way the merch is so look out for that do do look out for it i just made that that is very hot okay so I don't know. Like, I, I'm trying to think what's going on with me. Not really a whole lot. Um, I'm good. <laughs> like, I don't even know what to say. I'm trying to think about what has transpired since I last sat down to talk to you guys. And I don't think a whole lot has happened. Um, No, a whole lot has not happened. I will say though, I, m I mentioned before that I've been going to a cafe uh, to work sometimes. It is so dope going somewhere that is not working, meeting people who are working. This is, <laughs> I've been meeting some really amazing people and I'm just so grateful for that. Like, I don't know. I'm a little sentimental today, probably a little emotional, you know, girl problems and things, but yeah. So let's get into it. Oh, something did happen. Mm. All right, something did happen that I wanted to talk to y'all about because you know, homies. So, <laughs> so what do y'all do when an ex hits you up or maybe doesn't hit you up but sends out some sort of bat signal or maybe it's not actually a bat signal maybe it's just that you know they slipped up and double tapped by accident 
what do you do in those instances? Do you just kind of, you know, be like, mm hmm, with your looking ass? Do you reach back out to them in some way? Do you, do you send out a bad signal? I'm asking all of these questions because recently I was over here minding my business, not hardly, but completely minding my business. And I get an alert on my phone and it is an Instagram alert. Uh, and I haven't, uh, I haven't posted anything since I came back from vacation in January. So whatever is up there is from, from then. Um, but that vaca little vacation montage that I did got a like. And I was like, oh. And I look at the handle and I said, oh, it's you. Now, this was really funny because recently um, on Let's Have a Real Conversation, we were talking about we were talking about how sometimes, well, I was talking about how sometimes when men feel like they need to find you, they find a way. Like if they can't reach you on social, if they don't have your phone number or they've been blocked or something like that, they will find a way, some men at least. And I enlightened my co-host and let him know that one of the ways that men will try to reach out to you when you've cut them off in other ways is through email. So they will, they will reach out to you in different ways. And I have spoken to other women about this. This is not just a me thing. I have had this conversation with other women. They will find you. They will send you an email. It is the, the most bizarre thing. So I'm not going to get too deep into that because we spoke about that <laughs> at length. But the reason I brought it up was because it made me remember a time where someone did send me an email and I I don't know I got curious the other day um just because I was talking about it and I said well let me see if I still have that email just you know for shits and giggles and I look it up and re and remembered I didn't even remember this when I was thinking about it that the person signed his name as John Doe I don't even know what possessed me this was this happened a really long time ago I don't even know what possessed me to Click on that email. Today, I don't even think I would click on the email. It just said John Doe. And I clicked on it and it was like a whole a whole thing. Hey, Dion, how are you? Come to think of it, it was kind of creepy now. Funny your thing, John Doe. Anyway, so I see, let's get back to the Instagram post. So I see the Instagram post and I'm like, hmm, okay, all right. Now either you was, you was over here looking, cause I didn't even know, I didn't even know the person still follows me. You were over here looking, maybe you didn't mean to double tap, maybe you did mean to double tap. I don't really know what that's about and I don't really wanna know what it's about. If me and you don't speak, there's a reason me and you don't speak. So I left that shit where it was. Um, I did not say anything, uh, nothing. There were no comments, there were no DMs, it was nothing. Like I said, it could have been an accidental tap. Um, we'll never know, I mean, I hope we'll never know. I think that where it is, is where it should stay. So, yeah, but I was just thinking about it and I was like, you know, people are funny. Exes are funny. That's really all I got. Um, so that happened and I just moved on. That's the place I'm at in life. I just let it go. But anyway, so, so like I said, we don't have a whole lot to talk about today. Um, I do wanna start off with a petty or not. Nah. Um, I say all the time that uh, you know, I try to do my best to stay out of white people's business. And I'm going to continue on that path because um, I think that, you know, <laughs> I think that, you know, certain situations and certain people should be handled over there. But what I wanted to ask 
is I have a lot of questions today. What I wanted to ask was, um, I preface this by saying I was on Instagram when I saw this and I just was very confused at first because I was like, well, who is this person and why are they like, why are they talking about why are you talking about this person? It didn't it didn't make any sense. And I was like, who is this? And I looked a little harder and then I looked underneath at the caption and I realized that the person was Chloe Kardashian. Why does Chloe Kardashian look like if Kylie's lip kit were a person? It doesn't look like her, like not even a little bit. You know how some people lose weight and their face changes a little bit? Obviously they probably lost some weight in the face, whatever it is. That wasn't this, this was like, she looked like a different person. And I said, well, I know I haven't watched Keeping Up With The Kardashians in a really long time and I have not kept up with any Kardashians in a really long time, but what's going on over there? Something's going on over there. But like I said, I'm about my business. I'm asking the questions, but I'm not going to try to find answers. Um, it's really none of my business. So I'm going to just go on ahead and, 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 and move on. Move on. I'm trying to think of the best way to handle <laughs> this week's topics. I'm trying so hard. Okay, so what I'm watching is going to be great because, you know, it's what I'm watching, right? But let's get to the shit. I'm going to save the good stuff. I don't necessarily know if it's good. I, well, it's good stuff. I'll save the good stuff for last. And let's start with, um, let's start with the big elephant in the room. Let's start with the elephant in the room. I've spoken a lot recently about a certain actor how I really liked the trajectory he was on even lusted over him a little bit um I talked about uh the fact that you know I was really excited for his upcoming projects I've seen his most recent projects as well um and I always know that when I come here and I and I sit down and I speak with you guys I know that there is always a chance that someone will come and do something disappointing something that I can't rock with um you know and they kind of fuck up the experience right to a certain extent um now I don't have a whole lot of fat um, I don't have a whole lot of information, I should say, to make, <laughs> I'm trying to be more responsible with the way that I handle certain things, right? When you're talking about anything that has to do with abuse, assault, um, sexual assault, domestic violence, any of the things that fall under there. I want to make sure that I'm handling these situations with care, right? So as I'm sure you know by now, Jonathan Majors was arrested over the weekend uh, after a call was made to the NYPD or a 911 call was made, NYPD showed up. He was with a woman, um, who said that he tried to, you can look up the charges. I don't want to be, I don't want to trigger anyone any more than they may have been already from this conversation. Um, the woman was bruised. The woman had had certain injuries, um, according to police reports. And uh, she 
allegedly she told the authorities that, you know, he had uh, caused those injuries. Apparently he's the one who called the cops, which I don't know, you know, one way or another what, what all that means. But his team is vehemently trying to convince the public that he did not do the thing that he was arrested for. Um, the public has had a lot of different opinions, which I'm not, that's not what, that's not why I'm bringing this up. Um, I'm bringing it up because I have to, not because I want to. And all day I've been thinking about how I was going to bring this up because I wanted to bring it up as a, what we're not going to talk about is, but that felt irresponsible. So... And it felt irresponsible, not because I feel like I have an obligation to discuss this, these types of things. I feel like I have an obligation to address it because of the fact that I've been so complimentary of this person uh, for the last couple of months. So I don't want to ignore it. I don't want, I don't ever want my silence to be, um, you know, considered acceptance or anything like that. I don't I don't want my my views to be misconstrued. And I think anyone who who has been here and who has watched this podcast or listened to this podcast knows that I don't play with that shit. If you did that shit, then I'm ready to get you the fuck out of here. It is very easy for me. But what I will say is that there's just a lot of confusing information, a lot of, um, there's not a whole, there's not a complete amount of clarity on what happened, how it happened, who it happened to. Um, what we are clear on is that the police report does, uh, you know, address these bruises and, and injuries and to that end it is never okay to hit anyone not a woman not a man no it is never okay it's never okay to strike your partner it is i've said all of these things before um they're saying that they have video evidence to prove that this did not happen the way that it was brought to the police. Um, we have not yet seen that. Um, some text messages were released earlier that don't really make it look good for him. So, again, I'm not really going to give an opinion on what I think happened, what didn't happen. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Um, and I'm not ready to rule anything out. Um, I'm also not going to die on a hill to defend someone who, uh, just because he's popular. I'm not doing that. Um, so obviously this is really difficult for me to talk about because I just, I, I want to be careful. So we will, I will continue to monitor the situation. I will continue to uh, pay attention to the updates and we will take it from there. I just wanted to bring it up. I wanted to acknowledge it. I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time on it because uh, it's just one of those things where it's like, I don't even want to, like, I'm so sick and tired, and I've said it before, I'm sick and tired of not just being able to, you know, enjoy things, movies, TV shows, music, not being able to enjoy people, just like, it's always something, and I think that's why I'm frustrated, and that's why I'm uncomfortable, and... 
disappointed disappointed one way or another like because who wants to deal with this so all i'm gonna say is you know um i hope that everybody is okay and i hope that all truths are revealed and those who deserve justice gets it um yeah i hate this i don't <laughs> i hate this so much i hate it so much um in that same vein Did y'all hear about Shirley Ralph? She went on Angela Yee's um, show. I think Angela Yee has a radio show now. She left The Breakfast Club, but I think she has her own radio show now. I'm pretty sure I heard her on the radio recently. I don't usually listen to the radio, but I happen to be somewhere where the radio was playing and I'm pretty sure that was her voice. Her voice is very distinct. Anyway. She goes on Angela Yee's show and she goes on Angela Yee's show and she tells a story. I think she was just, you know, talking about her experience in Hollywood and all of that. And she tells a story about, um, a TV judge who worked on the same network as she did, who whose show started around the time that Moesha started. She remembers being at um, a company event where, you know, she said she, it was public, people were around, but she remembers him coming over to her and sticking his tongue down her throat. Now, what she says is she gives those specific details and then she says it was not Judge Mathis. Judge Mathis is a dear friend. Uh, she makes the point to say that. No one, she wasn't prompted to say that. Um, and so obviously she didn't say a name and the internet, you know, does what the internet does and speculates and does research and figures out what the timelines are and who was on the network at the same time and oh did Viacom own CBS at this point and who owned UP UPN and who did the, it was yeah so just you know all of the like geometric shapes and formulas moving around right um so and the internet decides that Judge Joe Brown uh is the TV judge that she's speaking of she never said it was him. She never said it was anyone in particular. Other than the specification she gave, she did. She left it alone. Um, Judge Joe Brown found out about this because the problem with the internet is, all right, y'all gonna go and do your research, cool. But then what y'all do is... <laughs> Y'all go and find whoever it is and harass the person or whatever it is. Like, y'all be like, ooh, it gotta be so-and-so. And it's not just it gotta be so-and-so. It gotta be at so-and-so. Like, the internet makes sure that there are no secrets, right? So people start mentioning him when they're posting about this story. Uh, he catches wind of it, obviously. Um, and then he comes out and says, I think it was a video he put up or something like that, where he was going to start, uh, people better cease and desist because he was going to start um, filing defamation lawsuits against people, against other people. He said that he has a history of, you know, making sure that women are protected and that um, this is not him and he doesn't want to be associated with any of this. Um, he basically said that this could potentially, you know, ruin his back and he's not interested in any of that and so on and so forth. I don't know what to do with this. I mean, Shirley Ralph never said it was him. I 
I think there is a very specific reason why Shirley Ralph did not name names. I know that that's been a question. Um, we still live in a world where people are, women have a hard time saying this happened to me and having it be something that is received in a positive way. We still have a ways to go with that. Yes, it's different now. Like, honestly, to me, it's different. It's more different in the sense that before women felt like they couldn't say anything. Now women at least feel empowered to start a conversation. But as far as how, as as far as how far they're willing to go with that conversation or to divulge this information, it fluctuates. And I think um, Rachel Lindsay said it best on Higher Learning that there's still a fear there that um, it won't be received well. And so you still kind of, like you put it out there, but you still kind of try to tread lightly. Now, I think saying where the person worked, where this happened, where the person worked and giving those specific details, I think it does leave it open for people to speculate on who it was and, you know, what happened. Oh, and I should point out that like, and this to me was like one of the biggest pieces of it was that she said that the network execs, they knew about it. Um, they basically nudged her and said, nah, you don't really wanna, that's that's not a road you wanna go down. I'm paraphrasing, but uh, you know, leave it alone, it's not a big deal, that sort of thing. So I could totally see, especially, she's riding very high right now. She's got a lot going on. Um, she's getting a lot of accolades. She has, uh, she's on Abbott Elementary. She's been doing all kinds of um, other cool projects. So <sighs> it sucks that these things happen. It sucks that these things happen. It sucks that uh, when they happen, especially those things that have that happened so many years ago, it sucks that when it happened or happens, it's this big this big, this awkward, this this uncomfortable, this painful thing that you have to deal with. Plus you have to muster up the courage to share it. It's just a lot. Um, I don't know what to make of it. Like, there's some nasty men out there just gross and disgusting. And like I said, I'm always ready to get them, get them the fuck out. They can go, they can go. Um, I hope it wasn't Judge Joe Brown. <laughs> I hope, I mean, I wish it didn't happen at all, but um, I don't know. There's <laughs> the, I don't know, I don't wanna talk about it anymore. But uh, I wish her well and I and I hope that, uh, I hope that speaking her truth was cathartic for her. Um, I hope it was and you know, for anybody out there who may be dealing with something like this or you know, not really sure like, oh, this thing happened and makes me feel icky or whatever, you know, listen, one thing you are not is alone. Um, so that's that. Um, I don't really have too much to say on it. Like I said, I don't think that these are situations that are happening for the express purpose of me giving my opinions. I just feel like I, they shouldn't be swept under the rug and we shouldn't pretend that they didn't happen. Um, if Judge Joe Brown is just caught in the crossfire, then yeah, that sucks too. Um, but again, she didn't name names. So 
And just because I just want to point out, I say this all the time, just because someone retracts their statement, just because um, someone was not the one to call the cops, uh, just because uh, someone protects the identity of another person, does not mean that they are being dishonest, does not mean that they are, that the thing did not happen. There's a lot of incentive uh, to protect Jonathan Majors, just to circle back a little bit. There's a lot of incentive there to protect him. Um, but again, I don't have anything other than that to say. Um, we'll just wait and see what happens, really. Huh. All right. Did y'all see that women are on the internet Women are on the internet right now on Twitter, actually. there's There are these threads going around um, talking about things that, things that they shouldn't have to do because it should be done by a man. <laughs> Here's the problem. <laughs> Nobody asked me, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. The problem is when you, <laughs> the problem is no one should be like, I thought that the general conversation was what it was. Like, I think that people have their preferences. I'll be honest. Um, I think that people prioritize gender roles far more than others and some and vice versa. And I think that I think that cre creating these requirements can be problematic. Um, I've said, I've, I've been very open about the fact that I do not like to take out the trash. I do it. I live alone. Who's going to take out my trash but me? I have to do it. I don't want to do it. It would be really great if like I didn't have to. If I lived with someone or whatever the case may be. Maybe I was married, whatever. Who... Honestly, a roommate, if they want to take out the trash, they can. Because I don't want to do it. It doesn't necessarily mean that I think that a man should be doing it. I just think that someone else other than me should be doing it. <laughs> but there were, a lot of, there were a lot of things listed like pumping the gas, changing a tire, taking out the trash was a common one, obviously. Um, I feel like those were the top, those were at the very top. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, a lot of people just blanketed like anything that requires you to lift the hood of the car. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think... <laughs> Then you have men in the comments too. I should point that out. That you have men in the comments being like, "Well, then if if that's what you want, then you know when when I expect you to cook and clean, what's the problem?" Somebody said cleaning the toilet. So one of the women said cleaning the toilet, and I was like, "Y'all don't what? You don't like you don't like to clean your toilet?" She was like, "Oh yeah, because you know like smells and and things, girl." Girl, is your it's the toilet you use. One thing about my bathroom, <laughs> it is very important to me that my bathroom is a clean space. I am very like intense when it comes to my bathroom and making sure everything is wiped down and disinfected and all of that. Um, so it was weird to me that she said that she didn't want to clean the toilet because. For me, in my mind, I'm like, if I clean the toilet, I know how clean it is. If someone else does it, I have no idea. And I still want to clean it. So, no, I don't see that. I don't, I don't see it. I really don't. And honestly, again, I live by myself. I do everything on my own. 
I might every now and then have like my brother come over and, and put up some, I don't know, a little, <laughs> a little wall hang or something like that. But everything else is me. This couch that's sitting here, this was not its original home. There was another couch that was here and you know who moved it all the way from the other end of the apartment to over here and then moved that one all the way to the other side? Me, me, all by myself. I was home alone. So yeah, it's a nice to have to have someone else do certain things for you. That is a given. Um, but should we require these things? I don't know about that. And like I said, people have their preferences, but some of the stuff I was reading was like, no, like I will never ever do that, ever, 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 ever. And I was like, okay, just, just you wait, just you wait. What if he has to travel? What are you gonna do? Um, what if he's just not there anymore? What are you gonna do? You gotta be self-sufficient. And I don't think it's that these women are not self-sufficient. I just think mm, they're being a little rigid. I gotta be honest. And again, I have preferences too. Please come take out my trash. Don't, no questions asked. I will, no, you can have it. You can do whatever you want with it, honestly. Hmm. I don't know, I just thought it was funny that um, the gender roles conversation is something that comes up so often. It's like, okay, but I thought it was, some of the uh, some of the comments were funny. So what I'm watching, I finished 911. Technically, I'm not done with 911, but it's currently in its uh, sixth season. Um, so it's on a little hiatus, and then it'll be back. And I think there's a couple more episodes, maybe like two to four episodes left, or something like, or like six episodes, something like that. Anyway. I thought it was a phenomenal show. It got a little, it's getting a little weird in season six, I gotta be honest, but every, if you can make it to season six and that's the first time it really gets bizarre, then you're doing okay. Plenty of shows by the time they get somewhere between seasons three and five, they have that weird season where it's like, the writers are getting anxious, they're trying new things and doesn't always translate the way that they expect it to. Um, so I kind of feel like season six of 911 is kind of like that, but I enjoyed it. I really did. And I would keep watching it, definitely. Yeah, I would. And I would recommend it. Um, next on the list is... <laughs> okay, this is actually the only other thing. So Love is Blind is back. Love is Blind is back. It came back last week. I think they dropped the first four, four episodes um, and then new episodes drop uh, on Friday. It's good. It's, it's good. I really want, okay. If you haven't seen it, you should probably leave because I'm gonna spoil a little bit. So, my faves <laughs> right now, and I don't think I usually have faves, but my faves, Brett, I had to look at her name, Brett and Tiffany. I love them so much. I want them to thrive. I want them to be good. Cute little black couple. I just, oh, I just want them to be good. I want, I want this to go well. I'm really excited about this. You know, Tiffany fell asleep on that man and, and, and I was worried. I was worried. And you know why I was particularly worried and I felt it in my soul is because she's me and I am I am she. I would have absolutely fallen asleep. Absolutely. And you know, I'm pretty good at like when it's a serious conversation, I'm pretty good at staying alert. But let me tell you, sometimes my body takes over and it doesn't allow my mind to be great. It just, and I feel like that's what happened with Tiffany when she fell asleep. And that man, he was like, nah, I'm good. I don't, I'm good on this. I don't want this. 
But then he actually showed up and I was like, okay, see, 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 it's not so bad. <laughs> it is not so bad. No, but I love them. I thought they were great. Um, or I think they're great. Uh, they seem to be really into each other. I'm also a little confused about the two white girls that keep snickering and making fun of everybody. Really? It's giving junior high. And junior high, nobody wants to see that on Love is Blind. It's weird. It's weird. I feel like they were trying to become like the villains of the show and it was just weird. It's weird. I don't know. I want to see how that's going to play out. But it's very strange. Um, and then the last, my last note, I see I'm not giving crazy spoilers or anything like that. My last note would be, uh, I just discovered today that Kwame, who several women uh, seem very interested in, Kwame was also, he auditioned for Married at First Sight. Okay, Kwame. So you have a little pattern going on here. He was just like, let me just sign up for all the dating shows and see what happens, you know? And okay, <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah, so watch Love is Blind. I'm gonna go deeper into it like I usually do, but you know, since it just came out a week ago, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be good. I'm trying not to give away too much, but yeah, uh, Brett and, and Tiffany are, for me, they're honestly, I could just watch a show about them. because I feel like there's a certain authenticity about the two of them. Oh, and apparently, I'm jumping all over the place, but apparently there is going to be a guy who picks one woman and then realizes that he shouldn't have picked her and then he's gonna try to pick the woman he should have picked. I don't know, that's about to be a mess. I haven't seen that yet. I haven't, I did not watch all four episodes. I think I watched two of them. So I have to keep going. I'm sure that <laughs> if you binged what, what was out there already, you probably know more than me and I might be talking about things that have already been addressed, but I haven't seen it yet. So I'm trying to take my time with it. I feel like, you know, you watch these things so fast and then they're gone and then you're like, all right, when, well, when's, when's the next one coming out? So I'm trying to take my time and you know, I have life things going on. I'm trying to take my time and just watch it when I can. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm watching right now. Um, that's what I'm watching right now. All right, so tweet of the week this week. I really don't know who tweeted this and I apologize. I did not, I wrote down the tweet, but I did not write down the author of the tweet. So that's my bad. But the tweet, it was what movie traumatized you as a kid and i can't remember a movie that traumatized me as a kid but i did want to point out the fact that um i was insanely terrified of the download video the one you're thinking of r kelly which you know we don't talk about him but him and Ron, Ronald Isley. I was so afraid of Ron Isley. I really thought that he was some gangster that was gonna come get me. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> I am not kidding you. Like my sister would be in the room watching music videos and I'd run out of the, like I was terrified like nightmares and just I don't know what it was about this man and it took me years 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 to really look at Ronald Isley and not be a little uncomfortable but I was terrified of that download video especially because it was like very theatrical you know back then videos were a big deal they spent a lot of money <laughs> to put these videos together they were like movies and that's what it was it was like very authentic and very real if you've never seen this video you need to go find it and look at it i know just i don't know find a way to bootleg it so you don't give you know him the, the streams or whatever it is but 
<laughs> I remember like I could see my sister in my parents' bedroom watching videos on on BET and me like in the corner peeking around I'm like is it over yet I was I was terrified I just knew that man was gonna come and get me I knew and I was already an insomniac so imagine me seeing the video and then having to go to bed just eyes open just awake waiting for Ron Isley to come get me but <laughs> So that is the most traumatic thing that I saw as a child, at least from what I can remember. I don't remember ever being traumatized by a movie. I wasn't really, I've never really been into scary movies. So I don't think that that was an issue for me. Um, but yeah, so that's our show. Don't forget, merch link is in the bio. No, that's not. merch link is in the show notes please do get your merch and thank you so much again to those of you who have purchased merch and you know where to find me i'm hardly minding my business on the socials um you know and you know i'm around yeah and if you want a dose of me uh before uh the next episode you can always check out let's have a real conversation a new episode just dropped this week and actually the isley brothers came up on this episode. I think the episode is actually called Between the Sheets. So check that out. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.